Today we have this really special integral. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the s minus 1 divided by x plus 1. And s here is a complex number in the domain of the gamma function, meaning that it's not 0 and it's not a negative integer either. And it's the structure here that makes this integral really special. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll know that if you integrate s, uh, x to the s minus 1 divided by 1 plus x from 0 to infinity, then you get one of my favorite tools, the reflection formula for the gamma function. So this evaluates to gamma s times gamma 1 minus s. So this integral here, it's the same integrand, but with the limits being 0 and infinity, it gives you Euler's wonderful reflection formula. However, things get interesting when you replace the upper limit of infinity by an upper limit of 1. And the result is pretty funky and the solution development is excellent. Without further delay, we're going to call our integral i so we have something to refer to. And we're going to make use of the geometric series expansion for 1 by 1 plus x, which is valid whenever the absolute value of x is less than 1, which is of course satisfied on our interval of integration. So we can write this as the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k. And this implies that you can write i here as the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the s minus 1 times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k dx. And because this x to the s minus 1 term is independent of the k variable, we can slip it inside the summation. And we can write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of negative 1 to the k. And on multiplying the two x terms, their exponents will add up. So you have s plus k minus 1. And we're integrating this with respect to x, of course. Next, if you switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators, then you can write this as the sum over k of the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 to the k times x to the s plus k minus 1 dx. And because this negative 1 to the k term is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating, we can take it outside the integration operator. So we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the s plus k minus 1 dx. And this integral here is pretty easy to evaluate. Um, it evaluates out to x to the s plus k minus 1 plus 1, so they just cancel out, divided by s plus k, with the limits being 0 and 1. And of course, all of this is expressed as part of a sum over the non-negative integers k. Um, wait, that looks like an, uh, like an awful way to write k. Um, not so good once again. Much better. But my handwriting is never going to improve anyway. So regular viewers of the channel know that as well. So finally, we get the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times... Now, uh, as x approaches 1, you get a 1 in the numerator, and as x approaches 0, the entire thing collapses to 0. So you're left with negative 1 to the k divided by s plus k. Now for the fun stuff. It's from this structure that we're going to extract our digamma functions. And we're going to start off by separating the sum into sums over even and odd values of k. So let's start off with the even value. So we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the 2k divided by s plus 2k plus the sum over k for the odd values of k now. So we have negative 1 to the 2k plus 1 divided by s plus 2k plus 1. And negative 1 to the 2k is going to be a positive 1, right? And negative 1 to the 2k plus 1 is going to be negative 1. So we can replace the plus sign here by a negative sign. And now I'm going to recombine the two infinite series expansions. So we have the sum over k of 1 by s plus 2k minus 1 by s plus 2k plus 1. And now we're going to add a 0. And a very special value, uh, a special version of 0, is 1 by 2k plus 2 minus 1 by 2k plus 2. So adding it to the mix here, we get i 
being equal to the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 2 uh, minus this thing here, 1 by s plus 2k plus 1 minus 1 by 2k plus 2 plus 1 by s plus 2k. Okay, cool. Now for once again separating the sums, we have the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 2 minus 1 by s plus 2k plus 1 minus the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 2 minus now 1 by s plus 2k. And obviously we can factor out twos from the denominator here for both the uh, infinite series expansion. So factoring out a two from here and two from here from both the denominators that is, I can factor out one by two, that means from the, uh, from the sum, and I'm left with one by k plus one. And what exactly do I get here? Uh, 2k turns into k and you're left with s plus 1 by 2. Okay, cool. Minus the sum over k, again factoring out a 1 half here, and we're left with 1 by k plus 1 minus 1 by k plus s by 2. If you're wondering whether we're any closer to digamma functions, well, you're right. We are pretty close, in fact, and the digamma function has this really neat series expansion. So digamma z plus one equals negative uh, euler masseroni constant plus the sum over the positive integers, let's call them n, positive integers n of one by n minus one by n plus z. And if you replace z plus one by z, that means you have a z minus one over here and if you let n be equal to k plus 1, meaning that if you want n to be equal to 0, we need k to be equal to 1. So we have digamma z being equal to negative euler masseroni constant plus the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by k plus 1 minus 1 by k plus 1 plus z minus 1. So the negative ones cancel out quite nicely, and you're left with this structure, which is the infinite series expansion for the digamma function. Now comparing the two structures we have in white and purple and with s being a complex number in the uh, domain of the gamma function, so that means this infinite series here, uh, this one, it evaluates out to digamma s plus 1 by 2 plus the euler masseroni constant and by similar token we have negative uh, we have minus 1 half the digamma function evaluated at s by 2 minus uh, plus the euler masseroni constant so the two euler masseroni constants cancel out quite nicely and we're left with 1 half of digamma s plus 1 by 2 minus digamma s by 2 this in itself is a pretty awesome result, but we're still a bit far away from the result uh, you saw on the thumbnail. And the evaluation or the journey to getting that result is pretty cool in itself. And once again, we have to recall the infinite series expansion for the digamma function. And this time I'm going to call on digamma 2z. And using the previous result we derived, we have negative euler masseroni constant plus the sum over the uh, non-negative integers n of 1 by n plus 1 minus 1 by n plus 2z. And what I'm going to do next here is I'm going to once again uh, separate this sum into uh, sums over the even and odd values of n. So with the even values, we have 1 by 2n plus 1 minus 1 by 2n plus 2z. Uh, and let's not forget this uh, negative order masqueroni constant plus the sum now for the odd values of n. We have 1 by 2n plus 2 uh, minus 1 by 2n plus 2z plus 1. And I've run out of writing space over there, yeah. Uh, poor choice on my end. Okay, much better much better okay nice and what else you may ask 
well, it would be pretty neat if I had this um, 2n plus 2 term as part of this uh, infinite series as well. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, because if I had that term here, then I could factor out a one-half term like I did before, and then once again get some uh, expression involving the digamma function. So we have negative order mascaroni plus the sum over k of 1 by 2n plus 1. Again, there is never any harm in adding a 0, and this time the 0 that I'm going to add is the same as the previous one. It's negative 1 by 2n plus 2 plus... 2n, uh, 1 by 2n plus 2. So yeah, this is a pretty useful version of 0. I've called on it twice in the video already, plus this other sum over, wait, the index variable is n. Sorry, I'm used to using k as an index variable. So we have 1 by 2n plus 2 plus, uh, sorry about that minus sign now, minus 1 by 2n plus 2z plus 1. Okay, cool. And now separating uh, these terms, separating uh, or splitting up the uh, infinite series, the first of these infinite series, um, we can write it as this sum plus the sum again over n of all of this stuff. Okay, that is pretty nice. And it's pretty easy to see here that this is a series expansion for the natural logarithm of 2 and I'll leave that as a little exercise for you but it's pretty easy to see given the structure of the series you have the reciprocals of uh, odd numbers and the uh, reciprocals of the even numbers and these have alternating signs the odd numbers have uh, positive signs with them and the even numbers have the negative signs with them so yeah this is pretty easy to prove that it's pretty easy to prove that this sorts out to the logarithm of 2. Anyway, uh, what about the other two infinite series? Well, if you factor out a one half from here, and again I'm going to need some more writing space, much better, much better. Anyway, so if you factor out a one half term, oh, sorry about that, terribly sorry, much better. If you factor out a one half term, you're left with 1 by n plus 1 minus 1 by n plus z. Okay, cool. And by similar token, over here, if you factor of 1 half, then you're left with uh, 1 by n plus 1 plus 1 by n plus um, z plus 1 half. Okay, cool. And you have this euler mascheroni constant that you can expand as negative gamma by 2 plus negative gamma by 2. So this is pretty useful in that you can just distribute it uh, as part of not this one, sorry about that, not this infinite series. You can distribute it as part of this infinite series and this infinite series because they both have factors of one half. So you can factor out of one half and you can just slip the uh, order mascheroni constant inside. And let me just do that. Okay, so here's that uh, big curly brace. Negative order mascheroni constant with the 1 by 2 already factored out. Curly brace is closed. And the exact same thing over here, but with less writing space. So you can just picture that in your mind. And let me just get rid of this because I already expanded it and used it up. So what you have now is this infinite series that evaluated to the natural logarithm of 2 plus 1 half of, again, the digamma function evaluated at z plus one half the digamma function evaluated at z plus one half. And what exactly am I going to do with this result that had on the left hand side, if you remember, gamma two, uh, digamma 2z? I'm going to substitute, I'm going to replace z by s by 2. So you have digamma s equal to log 2 plus one half of digamma s by 2 plus one half of digamma s plus one by two now. So this implies that one half of digamma s plus one by two equals digamma s minus one half of digamma s by two minus log two. And substituting this into the equation we found earlier, 
the equation in white that's just popped up in front of you, this implies that I equals, now this term here, one half of digamma S plus one by two uh, is now digamma S minus one half of digamma S by two minus the logarithm of two and you're already subtracting from it one half times the uh, digamma function evaluated at s by 2. So this term and this term collectively give you the digamma function evaluated at s by 2. So this implies that i, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the s minus 1 divided by 1 plus x dx evaluates to the digamma function evaluated at s minus the digamma function at s minus 2 minus the logarithm of 2, which is a really awesome result and I enjoyed evaluating this integral and proving this result. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.